and welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I have a very fun and whimsical project that is a continuation of the series that I've done for techniques of masking. And for this masking video today, I'm working with Hey Chick stamp set and that is a stamp set from Stampin Up that is free with a $50 purchase during celebration promotion. My card base is made out of soft suede and once it's folded and scored it is four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm doing some stamping right now onto some thick whisper white cardstock. I'm doing different generations of ink and it's all been done with early espresso ink pad. The reason that I'm using different generations of ink is that I want some of the images to appear as if they are lighter or, or farther away from the rest of the images. I'm making this card for a feature that is a theme of travel. So I thought maybe there are different ways that I can come about travel, but these chickens came to mind and I thought, well, they kind of travel and I want to give the appearance of the chickens traveling to the front of the card and they're appearing to come forward from the back of the card. I know it's a crazy idea and some of the stuff that I design and come up with is really not gonna play very well whenever I put it to life but I felt like I needed to give this idea a good flesh out just to see. Now sometimes the ideas that we as crafters come up with work and sometimes they don't <laughs> and you guys have seen some of my don't work ideas and so this one it's not too bad. I like the way that the chickens are going to appear to be moving around amongst each other and um, and it definitely gives a different kind of a look to a card than what I've done before. These large chickens are just being masked off with post-it notes. So far during this technique video series I have done masking with masking paper and with plain paper. And for this video, I wanted to use post-it notes to continue the thought that you can use whatever is at hand that works for your crafting. I've just done a stamp onto the post-it note, and as you can see, I'm fussy cutting it, and I did not need the entire chicken to be on that particular image stamped out and masked. Sometimes just the top part or just the bottom part of an image can be masked and it works really well for what your purpose is. As you can see, the bottoms of the chickens are not stamped, but that part of the card is going to be covered by these large chickens that are fussy cut. I partially dry embossed the card front out of the petal burst embossing folder. And the way that I did that was I pushed it through only partially into the Big Shot die cut machine and then I turned the embossing folder at an angle and pushed it through in a different direction. So that was able to give me a little bit of a look to where maybe the bottom left of the card is got the texture but the upper right section is going to be able to hold flat the stamping that I'm giving to those stamped images and it just gives a variety. It, it appears as if there is some texture in the front and then it kind of fades back away. So it's a little bit something different for a card that than I've made before and, and I'm okay with the final result. I fussy cut out the images that I want to feature onto the front and I'm using the stamp pads with the blender pen to do the coloring. The colors that I'm using for this project are Early Espresso, Soft Suede, Cajun Craze, and Delightful Daffodil, I believe it is. Or no, 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 I'm sorry, So Saffron. <laughs> uh, sometimes I put my supplies away before I record the video and so I'm 
having to remember what it is. A blender pen will work really great with thick whisper white cardstock and you won't necessarily need to use watercolor paper if you're using just a blender pen. The one thing to remember is not to go over the same area of the card too many times because then the friction of the blender pen will not keep the card stock intact. It will peel away a little bit. So if you want to be really careful on which, um, which areas you do your coloring. I'm using only a couple of different colors on the chickens and the way that I'm going to provide a little bit of variety is to go a little darker with some of the coloring than on other parts of the chicken. For example, I want to use the rooster combs. I want to give them some color, but I want to be able to use the same stamp pad in another area of the chicken. So I'm kind of going really light on those areas and kind of darker onto the rooster comb area. There's this little egg in the stamp set that I think is darling. So I'm going to also include a couple of eggs um, with the little chicken feet stuck out. And I'm not really sure at this point where I'm going to place those eggs, but I know they'll fit in somewhere nicely. I'm giving a little color to the back side of the chicken and I knew that this chicken image would kind of sit at a tail up angle. The way that the image is designed, if you were to place it that the feet are at the bottom, then the chicken tail sticks up in the air. And this would be the part of the chicken that I knew would be in contrast to the background images that I'm going to be stamping or that I have already stamped and I wanted that to be the one place on this large chicken that you will see a, a stark contrast. So I'm choosing to not color the whole chicken yellow or orange. I wanted the chicken to have more color at the part of the chicken that is actually going to be right in front of those other background chickens. It kind of feels to me that the chickens are in competition with one another so I wanted to also make them look different from one another. I'm trying not to go too dark on different parts of the stamp of the stamped image because then I feel like it would the images will kind of take over the rest of the project and then it won't hold together as a unit. So if you notice there is still a lot of white area in the stamped images versus the card itself. Usually I will dry emboss the whole card front and then layer images on top but I thought this would be a, a nice different way to go about the card project. Early Espresso is a really dark ink, but if you can use it where it is watered down, then it works very well as a light color. And I believe that Early Espresso has a more violet base, so it doesn't, when diluted, it doesn't turn green like some of the other brown colors that I work with. It keeps its color nice and it brings the violet hues that work really good with the yellows and the oranges that are in this project. I'm using snail adhesive to attach the card front to a piece of card that is still just the plain whisper white and it is a good idea whenever I'm working with a piece of paper that has been embossed on the Big Shot die cutting machine. To give it a little bit more stability, I just use a piece of cardstock that's one eighth of an inch larger. The embossed paper measures five inches wide by three and three quarter inches tall, and I made the paper that it sits on 
one eighth of an inch larger. There's also a matte piece that is one eighth of an inch smaller than the card base. So that would not be, it would be four and a quarter by five and a half minus one eighth. I'm placing all of the different fussy cut chickens out and I'm not really sure how I'm going to put them in regards to which chicken is going to appear on which side but I I finally decided that I liked that chicken that has the orange and yellow tail to come up against the others and at this point I want to try to cover the stamping that I did in the background so that I don't have any images that are like maybe cut off or floating. That's one reason why I chose to put the little egg as if it's creeping out from behind the other chickens to where it was going to cover up some of the background stamping that would have faded down into the petal burst embossing. I've added one more chicken to the mix and this is one of the messy haired chickens and I did not use the dimensionals to raise that chicken. I wanted to create a third dimension of um, images and so right now with the dimensions there's the forefront that has the chickens that are fussy cut then they're raised on dimensionals and then there's the chicken that is glued straight to the paper and then they're the ones that are stamped more of a monochromatic look in the background. I chose to put another messy haired chicken on this little piece that I have used the layering squares framelit die and I used also a piece of soft suede to make a background frame for the sentiment. I did rock the stamp a little bit whenever I did the stamping and so I will cover up that little stamp line with some of the sequins from the Sprinkles embellishments. They're from the 2017 Occasions catalog and these are the most fun using sequins that I've had in quite some time. I'm going to scatter some of those sequins down onto the embossed portion of the card and it's going to look like the same colors of the chickens and it will kind of be like a little bit of a where the chickens, the little pebbles and things are that the chickens peck at. Thanks for joining me for this very long video, I apologize for the length but I wanted you guys to get to see all of the coloring and fussy cutting. I invite you to go over to my blog at jennystampsup.com and there you will find a brand new card idea every day. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.